Hey guys, uh, Mr. Burns here again, bringing another math video. This one on completing the square and changing a quadratic function to its inverse. So I'm going to start with this guy right here. Y is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. And I'm going to change this guy to its inverse. Or I'm going to find the inverse function of this or the inverse of this. Um, so the first thing I have to recognize is that in order to change this to the inverse, I actually have to change it to vertex form first. So if you're not familiar with vertex form, it looks like this. y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. So um, this is probably one of the more common forms of quadratic. You probably learned it in like grade 11 or something like that. And it's useful for changing um, finding the inverse because if we were going to find the inverse of this really at what we do after this is once we have the vertex form found we switch x and y so if I was to do that right away I didn't know what x is equal to 2y squared plus 4y minus 1 and the question is how do you solve that it's not easy to do right I don't know of a way of doing it so the easiest way to do it I guess you could complete the square on it as it is but I think the easiest way to do it is to complete the square on this quadratic first, then switch the x and the y's, and then what you do is you solve for y. So let's do it. So first things first, I'm going to group up these two guys together. So I group up my two x terms, basically, my, or my x squared and my x term. And then I'm going to factor outside the brackets the coefficient that's in front of the x squared term. I'm not going to take out an x. I'm not really factoring here. I'm just taking out that 2. So I'm left with x squared plus 2x and then subtract 1. So my next step now is to rewrite this guy like this. So the object is I'm actually going to, this is where the name of the, of the process comes from. I'm actually going to complete the square here right now. So by complete the square, it means taking this this uh, quadratic that's inside the brackets here and making it a perfect square trinomial. So a perfect square trinomial is one that has uh, the exact same two factors. So it could be something like x plus 2, x plus 2, which we can write as x plus 2 squared. So any one of these are perfect square trinomials. So the question is, what's the value of c that does that? So this guy that goes right here. Well, we well, can use this formula. C is equal to B over 2 squared. So we take the B term, we divide it by 2, and we square it. So it's basically 2 divided by 2, which is 1. And of course, 1 squared is just 1, so that's what I add here. <clears throat> now we have to be careful because we have to take that away over here. But because I have a 2 in front, what it means, actually, I have to multiply these two together to figure out what goes here. So 2 times 1 is equal to 2, so I'm going to take off 2. So you could put subtract 2 if you wanted, I like plus a negative, um, whatever you like. So then I'm left with y is equal to 2. Now what I can do is factor this perfect square trinomial. So I know because it's a perfect square trinomial that has the same factor as its solution. So um, what adds to give us 2, multiplies to give us 1, well it's just um, 1 and 1. So it's x plus 1 squared. And now I just do the math on this one, and that's minus 3. So there you go. There's my vertex form. Looks exactly like this guy over here. So now my next step is to switch my x and my y. So I'm left with x is equal to 2y plus 1 squared minus 3. So I'm going to get rid of this k value over on the side here, the constant. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides to do that. x plus 3. And I'm left with 2y squared, or y plus 1 squared on this side. So now I can divide both sides by 2. And I'll start rewriting this guy over here so I get a bit more space. So y plus 1 squared is equal to x plus 3 all over 2. Then in order to get rid of this squared here, I take the square root of both sides. So the thing I have to be careful about is I have to do plus or minus. So I'm left with y plus 1 is equal to plus or minus square root of x plus 3 all over 2. Subtract 1 from both sides. Subtract 1, subtract 1. I'm left with y is equal to negative 1 
plus or minus square root x plus 3 all over 2. And there it is. So that's the inverse of this particular guy. So the only thing is that the form that this guy is in is not a function. So the reason why that is is because if I were to graph this quadratic, it would look something like this. Basically, a parabola that opens up. So if we did the horizontal line test on it, we draw a horizontal line through it, and it touches two points. So that's called the horizontal line test. And what that tells us is if it touches two points, that the inverse of this graph is not a function. And if I were to draw the inverse, the inverse just occurs. It's basically a reflection in the... Um, <clears throat> sorry, in the uh, line y is equal to x. So I'll write along here. And um, if we were to actually um, do a vertical line test on this, what's over here, it would actually touch two points, telling us that it's also not a function. So what you need to do is you need to restrict the domain of your original quadratic such that only one part of it is graphed. So if I were to do this and divide it, by the axis of symmetry, which basically is right here. So that x coordinate is my axis of symmetry. In our case, it's x is equal to negative 1. If I only want to take the right side of it, I can say x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So that only gives me this right part of the graph here, which corresponds with this guy over here. So <clears throat> if I wanted to uh, restrict the domain, that allows me to uh, have a inverse that is a function. So if I did that, then what I could do instead of putting the plus or minus there, I would only need the plus because as you can see, this part is all greater than uh, or equal to negative 1 in the y because it, when you switch the x and the y's, technically what this does is it gives you a range of y is greater than or equal to negative 1. So it allows it to be a function with that. So hopefully, guys, that explains how to do that. Um, again, there are other ways of, ch of changing the vertex form um, that are easier. If you want to check out one of my other videos, you can for that. All right, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.